<laughs> you know, this will not get him to 150. It won't get him to 100. The fact is, he must know that. Brian Johnson spends $2 million every year tracking every heartbeat, every calorie, every lab test in his mission to live forever, or at least to reach 150. But when I asked uh, Aubrey de Grey, the godfather of longevity science, he told me something shocking. This will not get him to 150, not even 100. So is Brian Johnson's blueprint experiment doomed from the start? Or is Aubrey de Grey underestimating what technology might deliver in time? In this video, you'll hear Aubrey's blunt critique, and I'll break down what it means for the future of aging, for Brian Johnson, and for the rest of us. And so what if you look at uh, the individuals, for example, who are participating in, I think it's called the Rejuvenation Olympics, like Brian Johnson, for example. So, for example, I think he says he's quite confident that he will live to his 150. So it's not clear to me whether he believes that would be including tech that will be available uh, when we have longevity escape or velocity or whether that would be alone with kind of the data and his habits uh, are you aware of that? honestly i'm getting a bit frustrated with brian um i know him quite well and he's he you know he says wonderful things about what we're doing um and i certainly believe that he is you know, making a big contribution to raising awareness and enthusiasm for doing things about aging but he isn't being at all logical about um, about this whole thing. He's not, for example, putting any of his own money into research. He's putting it all into um, his own treatments and uh, disseminating these, you know, improvements in what we, in how to use what we can do already. And that he must understand because everyone's told him that this will not give in. Uh, you know, this will not get him to 150. It won't get him to 100. You know, I mean, the fact is, he must know that. So I kind of, you know, I'm looking forward to getting him to come clean, so to speak, with regard to the question you're asking. Can you explain to me, um, I mean, I know there are different ways to measure biological aging, right? And when you look at these rejuvenation Olympics, to me, it seems like you have some people who, according to, to uh, that website, only age with the with a speed of 58% or, so, or something like that. Um, and it also seems that some people have become younger biologically by changing habits. So let's say you had a biological age like at 50 and then you do everything right and suddenly it drops to to 45. Um, do these results make sense or are we more kind of tricking ourselves to believe we're becoming younger? A good question. It's a very important question. Of course, the um, wonderful thing for our work at LED Foundation is because we're working in mice, we don't have to worry about any of this. We can just measure longevity and, and we're done. Of course, we are measuring all manner of different aspects of health as well. Uh, but honestly, the acid test of longevity is always going to be the thing that matters most in terms of convincing people that we've made progress, and um, we can do that. Whereas, of course, with with humans, we can't because it takes too long. So, yeah, so the measures of biological age that are so fashionable right now, these epigenetic clocks and so on, still have a long way to go to be really validated, I believe, at least. Um, at the moment, what we have is clocks that can um, not only tell you how old you are chronologically, which you already knew, um, it can also, to some extent, tell you how soon you're going to get sick. Uh, so in other words, there is some degree of um, um, measurement of biological age. However, what we need, and really do not have yet, is um, clocks that robustly reflect um, the impact of interventions. And here I don't just mean um, you know, high-tech interventions, stem cells or plasma exchange or whatever. I mean um, lifestyle interventions, anything. Um, at the moment, you know, there's just not been enough data. Uh, we've got plenty of um, you know, data on varieties of, a variety of different people, lots and lots of people, 
but it's just going to take a long time to gather data on um, people who have been availing themselves of different interventions and um, seeing what happens to their biological age as measured by these things like epigenetic clocks or whatever. At the moment, therefore, I believe that the gold standard for a biological age is the same as it ever was. In other words, we, are, we should measure um, functional uh, things, you know, uh, physiological things like grip strength and, you know, treadmill performance and so on, and cognitive things, of course, as well, uh, you know, memory, such like, um, which definitely, you know, people have got pretty good at identifying ways to measure these things that are reflective of age, of biological age. Uh, because they do actually change at a respectable rate well before people exhibit any anything that would be called a disease of aging. Um, and, um, you know, I don't, I don't have an uh, encyclopedic knowledge of how um, the biological age is being measured in these rejuvenation Olympics, um, but I would say that, that, that things like that are what should be getting measured. Now, to come back to your question about um, bona fide rejuvenation as a result of, you know, living, living right or whatever, I think we, I, I definitely do not want to, you know, downplay that. I think it's very uh, important that people should do their best to keep their biological age as low as possible and have it increase as slowly as possible. Um, and so people may think, well, hang on, I thought that damage repair was the only way you could um, reduce your biological age, and we can't do that yet, uh, to speak of. So this is a little subtle. We have, of course, built into us a um, huge arsenal of automatic built-in damage repair machinery that um, you know, eliminates damage as, the, as metabolism generates it. And the kind of damage that we automatically repair, I do not even include in my definition of damage. I only include things that we don't have machinery to repair and that we need to develop medical machinery to repair instead. Um, uh, but it's there and it accumulates. And um, it accumulates in a, um, you know, in a manner that is not necessarily optimized you know, because the body doesn't really care about living beyond the point where it's done um, reproduction. So, uh, essentially, if you um, do things that might not necessarily be called damage repair, but they are good for you, like, you know, you lose weight or whatever, then you are somehow, you know, you are taking the pressure off these various damage repair um mechanisms that we already have built into us. And that means they will work better. So you will see a rather widespread, um, you know, rejuvenation by some measures um, as a result of things like just getting into a better state of fitness. Um, but whether you would, whether we should call that bona fide rejuvenation in the sense of reducing your biological age you know, it's questionable because you really shouldn't have been overweight in the first place is really what I'm saying. But, I mean, if, if I understood uh, Brian Johnson correctly, for example, what he said is there's never been a human in history like me before because I measure everything and I, I adjust to whatever is perfect. So if there was a lady who could lift till she's 120, you know, I should be getting 20, 30 extra years because of that optimization. And, and that is kind of what you're saying. That is not happening because the body is not built for that. Well, it's more than that. Um, the first thing is that Brian is not built like Jean Carmel. Um, You know, first of all, he has a Y chromosome. Uh, you know, men tend to live less long than women in the first place. Secondly, uh, there are all, many, all, all manner of other genetic differences between Brian and Jean Carmel, um that, you know, uh, by and large, going to be life-shortening because Jean Carmel was selected, you know, was the one person who had the right genes as well as uh, presumably getting a lot of other things right. 